Hi, and welcome to Brems to Puzzles, and to the first puzzle in the next Sudoku Takeout pack, which is called Something Irregular, which will be a pack of 12 irregular Sudoku. And this pack hopefully will have something um, that will be helpful to people who aren't really used to irregular Sudoku. Um, and that is something that it was a discussion that came from me with Maggie. I'm doing a lot of setting with Maggie, and this is a puzzle that was created mostly by Maggie, but sort of. So what we did is I was chatting to Maggie and we realized that Maggie was struggling with irregular Sudoku. And I often struggle with irregular Sudoku as well. And what we wanted to do is try and become a little bit more familiar with how irregular Sudoku works. So we came up with the idea of coming up with a grid that had a lot of the elements of irregular Sudoku and then setting a pack using the same irregular grid. So every time you went in, you were able to sort of use what you'd learned from previous puzzles to take those into the next puzzle. So something irregular is going to be a pack of 12 puzzles using the same irregular grid. So as you learn the grid, you will be able to keep using the tricks you've learned in that grid. And this is the first puzzle created for the pack. Actually, it's not. I think it was the ninth puzzle created for the pack. But this is the one we wanted to create to put in first, because this is one that will teach you the elements of how the grid works. It is an easy puzzle. So um, welcome to Something Irregular, the second Sudoku Takeout pack, and to New Boxes by Maggie and Bremster, the first puzzle in the pack. Um, how we're going to release this, I don't know but I did want to record videos for it. Um, and um, those videos will get released alongside the pack. Will this be done as a series of videos only available um, on the channel with um, as unlisted videos from the pack? I don't know. Maybe I'll release these ones as a series of main videos. I don't know. We'll see how it all goes. So um, this is the irregular grid you will be seeing in all of the puzzles in this series. And we've found some really fun things to do with it. At least we think so. So, um, without further, uh, of course, there'll be a link below to this puzzle as where as you can go and get the entire pack. Um, and there will also be a puzzle list where, um, which will have all of the Sudoku takeout puzzles on it. So it will have the first one, which was the outside pack, and then this one. I do want to state that most of the puzzles in this pack are harder than a lot of the puzzles that you normally see in Sudoku Tudes or in the previous Sudoku takeout pack. There's a couple of ones which are moderately easy. But I would say overall, these are some of the hardest puzzles we've done because we're trying to figure out how the irregular works. And that caused us to play with some harder stuff. That could just be we're not as good as a regu at irregular yet, but that's what comes with practice. Let's have a look at new boxes. So what do we have? We have normal irregular Sudoku rules apply, which means we have to place the digits one to nine in each row, in each column, and each one of these are regular shaped regions without repetition. So we can't repeat digits in this shape. We can't repeat digits in this shape. We can't repeat digits in this shape. And we spent a lot of time refining this grid until we came up with one that we were very, very happy with. And this is that grid. So, of course, link below where you can try this yourself. I'm going to restart this puzzle to restart my timer. Not that I'm worried about time. Let's give this a shot. So there's a few things about the geometry of this puzzle that we want you to find. And if you want to discover them for yourselves, my hot recommendation is stop this video and go and try and solve the puzzle for yourself, because I'm going to spoil some of the geometry tricks right now. And we will be using those geometry tricks through the whole pack. So irregular uses a thing that we often call law of leftovers. And the question we want to start with is asking, where do these two digits um, those two digits there go in row one because they cannot repeat in their region, but they have to go in row one. So they're those two digits there. And if those two digits are those two digits, well, we have to put a two in those two digits and this immediately becomes a two. And we have to put a six in those two digits and this immediately becomes a six. And this puzzle was designed to try and show off that geometry and allow people to start because those two digits must be those two digits. So we can immediately write a seven there and a three there. These two digits must be these two digits. So we can write a four there and an eight there. These two digits must be those two digits. So we can write a five there and a one there. So that's one of the first tricks that we wanted to show off with this grid. 
The other one that you will learn is to do with column uh, five and row five, because these four digits um, have to go, those four digits here have to go in this region somewhere, but um, in this plus region somewhere, but they can't repeat in column five. So those four digits are these four digits. And that means that in yellow in here, we have to put a two and a four. Well, these are filled with seven and nine. That can't be a two. So that's the two and that's the four. But these digits now must take a seven and a nine. So these are a seven, nine pair. And that one can't be the seven. So that's the nine and that's the seven. And then we can repeat that trick. At least I believe we can in this puzzle with these four digits also have to go into this plus shape, but they can't repeat in those. So those four digits are those four digits. So we need to put one and three into yellow, but these are five and six. So these become one and three, but the three makes that the one and that the three, and five and six need to go in those, but that can't be a five for multiple reasons. So that's the six and that's the five. And that is the basics of the geometry of this grid. Um, there is other geometry tricks in this grid that can be used, but they're the fundamental geometry tricks we wanted to put into the grid um, in order for this to work. Now we can see that both column five, row five, and the central re region are missing an eight. I think that was the main thing we wanted to teach with this puzzle. And now we're just, uh, now I think I'm just doing Sudoku. So let's have a look at the Sudoku. Uh, we're not putting seven in any of those. So seven is in one of those two, um, which means seven is not in those or those. That seven is looking across saying no seven there. So the seven in this top region is here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to call these regions moving forward. I'll have to come up with something. Um, so there's no seven in those or there. So that becomes a seven. Um, where's the sevens I'm missing? There's no seven in this region yet. And I think it has to be in one of those two. Yeah, which will line up with those two. Because I can't put seven in either of those and I can't put seven there. So these are the sevens I haven't placed in the grid yet. Okay. Um, what's next? Can't put eight here. Can't put because of that eight. Can't put eight in any of those. Can't put eight in any of those. Eight is in one of those two. Which is meaning eight can't be here. Eight can't be here and eight can't be here. So eight is in one of those two. In fact, let's write this triple in because one, two, three, four, five, these are six, eight, and nine. There's no six here. There's no six here. So this is the six and the eight is looking at making that the nine and that the eight. So looking at that triple was the right thing to do. Now there's a triple in this box. One, two, three, four, eight, and nine go into those. The eight is looking up, taking eight out of those. That becomes the eight. Now there's a four, nine, not sure, but we're only missing three digits in this row, which is four, five, and nine. So this can't be a five, and this can't be a five. So this is the five, and this is the four, nine. What's the three digits I'm missing in this region? So these have to be, if I could select them all, one, six, and nine. There's no one in there. There's no, no sorry, I removed the wrong digits. No one in there, no nine in there. But if a one, six, nine is here, this becomes the four because it can't be a nine. That becomes the nine, making that the four. This is now a triple, which is one, two. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it's one, two, nine. One and nine are already in there. So that becomes the two. And this becomes a one, nine pair. So in this row, I haven't put a three yet. So this becomes a three. And now this becomes a triple, which I need to put in two, four, and seven. So these are two, four, and seven. There's no seven there, of course. There's no four there. I think that's the limit of that at least so far. Okay, so I'm only missing two digits in this column, which is two and eight. So these are two and eight. The two up here means that's the eight and that's the two. Um, now, maybe these four digits, because in this row, I need to put one, three, four, and nine. 
So this is only one or three because it sees four and nine. In fact, where do I put four in this top row? Because four can't be there and four can't be in those two. So that's the four and these are now one, three, nine. That's a one, three. Neither of these can be nine. So those are one, three. That's the nine. Cool. Okay. So what is next? Maybe this column, which is missing one, two, three, and six. Well, I can't put two in any of those or that one. So this one down here is the two. These are one, three, six, and must contain a six. The one and the three is looking over, telling me which one. That is the six. This is a one, three. And the three is looking across, making that the one, that the three, that the one, which is looking down, making that the six, that the nine, and that the one. Now I'm missing three digits down here. I've got one, two, three. I don't have four, five, and six, but I do have seven, eight, nine. So these are four, five, and six. The four comes out of there. The five comes out of there. But four has to be in one of those two. Ah, the six comes out of there. Yeah, not sure. So let's look at this column now. I don't have two, three, I've got four, five, six, seven, two, three, and eight. So these are all two, three, and eight, and that three means I can't put three in any of those. So that's the three. This is now two and eight, but that one can't be an eight. So that's the eight, that's the two. This is not the eight anymore. So in this column, I've got one, two, three, four, I need five, six, I've got seven, eight, I need nine. So these are five, six, and nine, five, six, and nine. There's no nine here, so nine is definitely in one of those two. This is now a five, six pair. I can probably do something more here. Five comes out of that, six comes out of that. But the five, six pair now, because I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, this becomes the one, which is cool. I could have got that triple by looking at the box rather than the column, but I didn't. And that would have given me the one as well. So what is this triple? I've got one and two. I need three, five, and seven. Well, the three and the five makes that the seven. So seven comes out of those. And then this three makes that the five and that the three. The two looks across making that the seven, taking seven out of there. The two makes that the four and that the two. The four looks all the way back, making that the five, which makes that the nine, which makes that the six, which makes that the four. The five looks down, making that the six and that the five. And the nine looks across, making that the one and that the nine. Sorry, that the one and that the nine. I said the right thing and typed the wrong thing. So... That's New Boxes by Maggie and Bremster, a puzzle designed to go at the start of the pack to teach the geometry of the, um, of the irregular grid. The next two puzzles are going to be slightly harder, um, just standard irregular puzzles, similar to the way in the Sudoku Tudes, I put the classics at the front, and then we will start rolling out the um, the ones using the the variant um, the variant uh, constraints. Now I kind of recommend solving these one a day, but do it the way you wish to. And I really do think that we found some fun things in these these grids. Feel free to leave comments below or on the free Patreon post or on Discord or, or just send feedback through by email about what you think. Reach out via Discord if you wish um, is probably a good way of getting through as well. But just feel free to leave feedback about what you think of the pack and whether doing a pack using multiple puzzles of the same irregular grid is a good idea or not so that you can learn from what you've discovered on the irregular grid. As we get through, I think you'll find that it does allow us to play with some ideas that if we just did the irregular grid on its own might be a little bit too challenging. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully these puzzles will all come in as a under 30 minute solves for most of you. We'll see how it all goes. Thanks everyone for watching. And as always, Good luck with your solving. <laughs>